So this is once again talking here about the fitra and we as Muslims, when we come back to the Prophet ﷺ, we should understand when we go through his life, how he was educated and then the fitra in him. There is something that has to do with the fitra. He was a human being and the Quran is telling us, I am but a human being. I'm like you. I'm a human being. And this is why I'm your example. This is why I'm your model. I'm your model because I am a human being. And if you were angels, I would have been sent as an angel. This is also what we find in the Quran. So he is an example because of his humanity and the way he himself was going through steps here. And then the second point, which is very important, that how was the translation of the first conversion of the Prophet ﷺ in his life. Because we have to come to this, because the chronology is very important. I was talking about the first verses that was, were, were revealed. There is something which is very strange with the first verses and chapters that were revealed, is the relationship between the presence of God and the way you look at nature. Wal-Fajr, wa wa-Tariq, all these things have to do with if you are close to him, you look at the world in a different way. So you look at the creation and you start understanding the meaning of praying. In fact, to pray is to thank Allah, isn't it? It's to come back to him and to thank him. For what? For what he gave you. And the first conversion in the cave, was look at the world in a different way. Yesterday you were seeing elements, today you, ha you have to see signs. And the signs is what? The element plus the meaning of the element, there is one God. That's a spiritual dimension. He was looking for truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him, I am here and all this world is a gift. And you are Khalifa fil ard, a vice chairman. You have to manage you don't have the ownership. This is the deep spiritual message of Islam that the first conversion has to do with nature, the way you look at nature. And if you understand, the Prophet ﷺ liked so much Surah Al-Rahman. Arusat Al-Quran is just the, the, he liked it so much because it's beautiful with this uh, uh, coming back as if it was something coming back with this reminder. And then there is uh, two verses that after he's a Rahman, Allah al Quran, Khalaq al Insan, Allah al Bayan, is Shamsu al Qamaru bi Husband saying, Look, everything is in order. There is very, very strict order in nature. Shamsu al Qamaru bi Husband, when Najmu was Shajaru yesterday. Is Najm is the star, or it could be even the, the plant, and the trees are, are praying, are prostrating. Meaning what? Now it's the time you understand you don't look at nature with your mind, you look at nature with your heart. And with your mind you understand it's scientific, with your heart you understand it's praying. Nature is praying. But you don't understand their prayer. This is something which is the starting point of the, 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 the prophetic journey. If we are not able to come ourselves to this, you are going to do a PR exercise by saying he was so nice. But that's not the point. We are not here to sell the Prophet ﷺ. We have to understand this from our, from our, in our own teaching, in our own education. And then all what I'm saying here, you can understand the meaning of praying. As the stars, as the moon, as the, the sun, as the mountains are praising God, what you have to do with your consciousness is to praise him through your prayer. So you give meaning to what it means to pray. What it means to pray. And by the way, are you sure when non-Muslims are asking you, why do you pray, it's why? Very often we, we come and say, okay, because we have to pray five times a day. I don't care about the number. I want to know the meaning. What is the meaning of praying? You get this if you come back to the very beginning of the spiritual journey of the Prophet Sallam. To, to remind the mean, to remember the meaning, to remind uh, ourselves what is the very essence of what we are doing. We are integrating nature because everything in nature as the angels, and by the way, angels exist.
if you understand what I mean. It's very difficult with secular minds and rationalists say, oh, you still believe in angels? Yes, and so what? So there is the invisible dimension here that even we have to be careful. You know, I saw many people converting to Islam and there are steps. We have to be very careful. I will come back to this later. But just what I wanted to say here is when you come to the Prophet and you try to understand his life for yourself, the way he was before, and then you come the way he was, uh, he was uh, looking for truth. And then Allah SWT coming and changing everything about his, he converted his heart by converting the way he was looking at nature first and then coming back and, and say look the desert if you understand the relationship between the desert and water and rain you will understand the reality of life because it's not ending so all these are signs so it's a connection and you can see now uh, in very many settings the people are uh, you know they like these kind of exotic things about the environment it's deep in our tradition we don't know how to deal with it because we are not teaching this we are not coming to this understanding so this relationship and there is another thing which is important is that the prophet had a family and the way he was when he got you know i know that uh, you know, when I, I wrote this year, I had people coming say, how come could you say that the Prophet was doubting himself? Oh, I'm just quoting Al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari is Sahih. As you know, for some of the Salif. By the way, we can discuss. It's another discussion about is everything Sahih in uh, Al-Bukhari when Muslim. But anyway, this one is a Sahih Hadith. That the Prophet in Al-Fatra, when he, Allah kept silent for a while, he didn't send. He was doubting himself to the point that he wanted to kill himself. And this is the, one of the last hadith in Al-Bukhari. And in fact, he had this. Two or three things are very essential here. So be careful. He was not doubting God. He was doubting himself. Thinking I might not be the right person. It might be that I'm not at the level. So he had this. But there are things that are very important that the Prophet ﷺ, when he got the message as a human being, he was himself feeling fragile. And what he did, he went to his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha. And you know the story, Zammeluni, Zammeluni. But this is very important for us to understand that at one point he got the message, doubted himself and went to his wife. And she came with the words that were powerful words of I'm protecting your, you out of your qualities because you are a good person, you care about the poor. Look at this, translating this into your doubt could be legitimate, but Allah cannot just misguide you. So you are, so look at this. He's the one who is going to change the world and he did it, his wife. That's good to remember, brothers. No, 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 it's not, it's not a, a meeting wives against husbands, <laughs> man. But, but look at this, the way he was. And we have so many occurrences where he, ha he was in need of this support. And, and after Al-Fatra, he came back and his wife was, was there. Aisha was there. Umm Salam, he was listening. So meaning what? It's not because you are protected by God that you don't need the people you love and your family. And this is once again something which is very deeply rooted in the prophetic life, in his life. And when you speak about this and you understand if you internalize this, this, this is why you can talk about him. Not to sell his story, but to translate this into what is important in our life. This is the intimate universal message of why family is so important. If the Prophet was during Ramadan showing tenderness and affection to Aisha radiallahu anha. What does it mean? Yes, we have to fast. Yes, we have to avoid things during the day. But to be loving, to be caring, to be serving. So the Prophet was serving his family. The only thing that was the, 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 uh, stopping him from helping was that when he was hearing the 
called to go to pray. So he was leaving to pray, but he was serving the family. The one who changed the world served his wife and his kids, his daughters, to make it clearer. So I think here it's important for us to understand this message because what I'm talking about here, it's the way we understand this deeply. It's not, these are not facts. This is where we have to come this understanding because all what I'm saying here, if we internalize, I'm saying, if we understand this, this is the way we are going to be able to talk to the people about the Prophet, it's the way we are translating this. And then there is something also which is so important in his life that we have to come. He was full of wisdom that there is something which is essential. That you will see, and this is why he is not an, an innovator. He was following in the footsteps of all the messengers. Jesus, alayhi salam, Moses, alayhi salam, all the messengers. There is something there. You are not going to change the world if you are not close to the poor people in your society. And by the way, we, we like this. We are sitting in this room. I say, mashallah, that's very powerful. Look at the situation of the poor people in the Muslim majority countries. Look at the way we treat the people, the poor people. The lack of respect, the lack of respect for their status. And we want to sell this. And among this, I'm sorry, if you look at what is happening today, I'm very critical, and, and some of you who are following my work, you know that I'm very critical of what is happening uh, around uh, Al, Al Haram today. It's becoming the, the most capitalistic environment that we have. All malls, when you go to pray and you are going there uh, dressed in a way which you are celebrating poverty before Allah and all around Al Haram, malls and capitalism and McDonald's, halal. And the way we treat the poor coming to the country as slaves. As slaves. So, how are you going to be? trusted in the message if we are not clear with this that all the messengers and the last prophet Islam, was saying and repeating something which is so important not only you serve the poor but you love them Allahumma nas'aluka hubb al masakin so this is also something which is essential is a universal message all the messengers all the prophets came with something which is we change the world relying on the poor people and relying on their quest for justice and dignity and this is the way he was with uh, 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 his own uh, daughter who was serving the sofa who were around the mosque in uh, in uh, in medina so once again, this message is also something which is important, is his concerns about uh, the poor people, the needy people, to the point, to the point that one of the very rare occurrences that we have in the Quran where the Prophet ﷺ was questioned about his behavior and saying that was wrong when he was attracted by the rich and forgetting the poor old uh, uh, asking him question about the Quran. So this is, you know the story, but this is something which is, a, once again, if we come ourselves deep to this, but if we are trying to be consistent with this message, once again, it's not only, you know, I, 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 I have nothing to sell. I'm not living in the West just to say, you know, he is. No, I, I think that we have ourselves to come with this deep understanding. But not only this. That the Prophet and, and, and we have also to deal with it, he was wise with the people, and we know this. He was talking very slowly, repeating for the people to understand. So he was respecting the minds that were listening to him. This is one. Second, with the poor, he was serving the poor. And he was even protecting their mistakes and their weaknesses. But there is something which he was also doing. He was resisting the oppressors. He was courageous. And all what we have about the Prophet is that during the struggles and during the battles, he would be the first and he would be courageous and he will speak the truth. And this is what he did in Mecca. Once again, don't take, uh, you know, don't take the situation in Mecca as uh, passive resistance. He was speaking the truth to the people. 
I'm here to come with a, a, a message, willing it or not, this is the message. And if you want me to stop, give me the, the, the sun, give me the moon, I'm not going to stop because this is a message that you have to listen to. This is my freedom and my right to speak out. So he was courageous. He was facing dictators. He was facing uh, oppressors. And at that time, oppressors, they wanted to kill him. He was facing them. So I don't want this... Uh, you know, coming back to the Prophet Salam is all about wisdom, don't speak to... No, that's not the Prophet Salam. I'm sorry. The Prophet Salam was wise with the people, serving the poor, resisting the oppressors. This is the seer of the Prophet Salam. And if one woman, one woman was oppressed because of her headscarf that he, someone, somebody tried to remove, he stood up with an army. I'm not going to let you down because in our philosophy of life is not a question of quantity, it's a question of principle. You touch one, you touch humanity. You touch all of us. Which is not exactly our state of affairs today. As you know. But once again, this message coming from the Prophet ﷺ, talking to uh, rulers and going as far as to exile because he was, and knowing that struggles and battles will come out of this, when he left Mecca to Medina and arrived in Medina and he knew that battles will come, the things that he said is just to come to the principles. And the principles is Ifshu Salam, Atayimu Ta'am. Look at this. Ifshu Salam is the meaning of Islam. You are here as agent of peace. Atayimu Ta'am, serve the poor. Silul Arham, the family. Don't lose your family, you are losing the society. Sallu wa nasu niyam means pray while the people are sleeping. Why? Because if you pray with your heart during the night, you will change the world using your mind during the day. But it's a connection which is not the Sufi trend that we have now. It's pray during the night and disappear during the day. And the last thing is tatullu jannata bi salami. This is the final step, which is this is the, 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 the journey. So, so what is important for us is to get this message uh, right. And then two things that I wanted to add. He also was a leader. And he was a leader and he was listening to the followers. And you know, Amruhum Shura by Nahum, this is what we have in the Quran, but the Prophet was uh, experiencing this with the people. And you know, with Hubab ibn al Mundir in Ghazwid Badr, that he came to him and said, where we are here, is it your opinion or is it a revealed? He said, no, it's my opinion, so it's wrong. That's not the right strategy. Try to say to one of our leaders today, it's wrong. If only you dare to speak out. So the leader gave space to the people to express themselves. So this is why the quality of the companions was so uh, uh, high, because they had space to speak and to speak their mind. And you know how much Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Umar ibn al-Khattab, they went in disagreement in so many issues that even we find in the Quran that this is translated in the, the arguments that they had. So once again, he was a leader as a human being, giving space, and even in Ghazwat Uhud beforehand, he was of the opinion to stay within the Medina. And the young people say, no, we go and we do what we have done in, uh, what we did in Badr. And he followed, he was right, they were wrong, they lost. And then the Quran is confirming the principle, but he was listening to the people. If this is your opinion, this is the way I have to go. So if you look at all these dimensions, you can see that you have the intimate universal and you have the collective universal principles and, and values that we are sharing with humanity. But we need to come very deep in our understanding of the Prophet and not to try uh, to... Uh, uh, to, to be at the periphery. So consulting people, listening to people, serving the people, this was the way the Prophet ﷺ was. And more importantly, he came with a message and he was the first to listen. And this is why I want to tell you something. If you want to talk to people of other faith, if you want to communicate, instead of coming and say, I have something to tell you, this is my message, this is Islam, you better start listening. Because the people will tell you about the way you can understand from where they listen to you. Listen to what the people have to say. You will understand also the way you are answering their questions. 
Because if you don't listen, it's as if you speak English to people who are speaking another language and at the end say, oh, they don't understand. No, you are not speaking the right language because you don't listen. The Prophet was very, very, this was the very powerful dimension of his life. He came with a message and he spent time listening to people and even their mistakes and he was covering, covering the people. He was not a judge. So welcoming the nature of the people is to understand something which is important. You might be wrong with your mind. You might be wrong with your behavior. You might be wrong with your choices, but there is something that I respect before what you do with yourself. I respect your being. The Prophet ﷺ was respecting the being of the poor people, listening to what they have to say. And you know the poor who came and he, who had uh, 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 sexual relation during the day, during Ramadan, and the Prophet ﷺ covered him and he gave him even, he, he came with a sin, he went back with dates to eat. Which is a message that is putting first your responsibility before the judgment. And at the end, the relationship that you have with Allah SWT. So if you come with all this, and this is where if we want to talk to the people about the Prophet ﷺ, first we need to understand that this is the great introduction to Islam. And then you need to extract from his life the universal intimate dimension and the universal collective values. And then you follow and you speak about this and you are not reacting. When he was attacked, the Prophet ﷺ was not responding. We had this story when Abu Bakr Siddiq was with him, they were sitting and they were insulting him and he was not responding. And when uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq reacted, he left. And then, then he ran after him and said, are you upset with me? He said, you know, when, the sil when, when I was silenced, angels, because they exist, were responding. But when you responded, the devil came and I can't stay when the devil is there. So I left. Look at this. It's when you are attacked, think about the spiritual dimension. How are you going to react to this? Out of wisdom, you should first listen to what the people have to say. Respond with your own wisdom, but be careful. Your wisdom is sometime to listen and to come with the deep message of Islam. And sometimes it means to be courageous, to challenge the people, not to accept that you are saying this. So when people are insulting uh, the Prophet you have the right to say, no, I'm sorry. 